Super Train 2025 is Canada's largest train show. I was there to uh, show CW to kids at the Calgary Amateur Radio Association booth, but what I found was way cool, in addition to dealing with the kids, of course. Stick around, I'll show you all about it. Stay tuned. Well, hey, I'm Smarter with Vince is at Super Train Calgary, and I am at the Morse Telegraph Club booth, and I am standing here with Kevin Jepson, who is going to tell us all about working telegraph and expanding a telegraph network to keep the history alive. So, Kevin, you're the lead technical guy for figuring out how to expand telegraph to all kinds of spots in Western Canada, right? Correct. And yeah. so how many points of presence do you have now? Right now we have seven stations on the line. Okay. Uh, in, four in Alberta and two in BC, and then one dispatcher station. Awesome, real good. And so this is the Calgary chapter of, do I have this right, an international club? Yes, the International Morse Telegraph Club. Yep. Okay, real good. And so for all the ham radio guys that are watching this right now, they're seeing over your shoulder the American Morse code, and they're kind of wondering, why does the C look different? Right. <laughs> and so tell us a little bit about how those two different codes, they took a fork early on. The original code, the one you see here on the, the quote behind me, is the code that Morse actually invented back in 1840. Okay. After much fits and starts, he came up with that code. Um, there are some interesting things about that code. If you look at the C, there's a gap in it. It's yes. two dots, a gap, another dot. There are several char characters like that. The C is like that, the O is like that, the R is like that, the Y is like that, the Z is like that. Yeah. Um, those you can hear quite clearly on a sounder. Mechanical, electromechanical sound. Right. So a C is right. There's a right. slight gap there. You can hear that. Or sure. a Y. You can hear that gap. Sure. So that works on this. And this was the original setup that Morse invented. And the radios were using it. The banks were using it. Newspapers were using it. When this code went to Europe for the Europeans to use, it's an English alphabet. That's 26 characters. Right. Uh, didn't work very well for Russian, which is 33, or German, which has all kinds of extra funky symbols in it. So the Europeans all got together and said, no, we need a code that will work for any language. And they surprisingly came up with one that everybody could use. Sure. That very surprising. code is, was known as Continental Code, and it was the, what the Europeans used. One of the changes was they took out all those gaps. They took all the gaps out of those characters, rearranged them, they changed all the numbers and all the, the punctuation. So that was the European code. And then when Marconi invented the radio, uh, you guys would know exactly when that was, I always say somewhere around 1900. Yeah. Uh, with a radio, which doesn't click like this, it buzzes or it beeps, yeah. you can't hear the gaps. Right. So Marconi never used this code, he used the European code. And then oh. by the middle of the 1900s, so 1912, after the Titanic sank, Every ship at sea by law had to have a radio, right. and they were all using the European code. And so you ended up with international Morse code, which was radio, and uh, this became American Morse code to distinguish it, and this is what was used by banks and the railroads and uh, newspapers right up until the 1960s. Right on, very good. And so now with this sounder and this network that you have uh, built out across uh, parts of Western Canada, um, one of your members was telling me that there's some computing and some internet technology involved. Tell yep. us a bit about that. Well, what we've got on the back of this display here is we have a little Linux computer. It's about four inches by four inches by one inch. Okay. It's a, a box that actually would go on the back of a TV to convert a dumb TV into a smart TV. Sure. Uh, it runs Linux and it's running a program that allows to translate the physical uh, communication, Morse, onto the internet. At the other end, at each of the stations on our system, is another one of those connected to real physical equipment, and it's translating it back in. So what you are hearing right now is coming from the server that's at the center of this thing, and it's the, the uh, headlines from the BBC. Sure. And it's just spooling them out onto the line, so we have some traffic. 
Um, at this show, we also have a physical connection from this station to the Heritage Park station at the other end of this aisle. Right. Uh, and they can hear this too. And so the line that we've set up with the seven current stations, eventually to be 32 stations, um, it is all museums that have physical uh, equipment or anybody that has physical telegraph equipment will be connected to that line. Very and cool. You have to keep this sound alive because nobody uses this for anything. The last message in this form was in 1973, and I believe it was in Esquimalt, BC. Right. And it was, this is the last message on the CP right. telegraph system, and he shut it down. Uh, but we are trying to get this back up because the guys who actually know how to do this are pretty long in the tooth now. Yeah. <laughs> and we're losing them. So we are getting young people interested and excited. We're doing training programs at Heritage Park in Calgary to teach them how to use this code. And then with our new system, they can we have more people that are going to be able to use this code and we can chat back and forth across the internet. Right on. Kevin, thank you so much for taking time to talk with me today. My uh, pleasure. Thanks very much. And so that is the great story of the Morse Telegraph Club, the club that aims to keep telegraph alive in our history. Uh, some guys that get really turned on about Morse code and the convergence of old and new technology. I hope you'd enjoyed this. I hope you saw the passion in their eyes. Go check out the Morse Telegraph Club and see if there's a local chapter. They are all over North America. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. 73.